Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna be creating a clone of the Hulu website homepage. A little while ago, we actually did the Netflix one. We did Microsoft, we did a, a few different um, clones and you guys really seem to like that. So we're gonna get into obviously HTML5 and uh, modern CSS, including Flexbox, the grid system, media queries. We're gonna make it fully responsive. We're also gonna add a little bit of JavaScript so we can have this nice little login modal pop up. Uh, but basically, you know, we have the header area, the subheader, we have this area with some covers, we're gonna do some overlays, this live TV section, um, then we have the footer with some unordered lists and some social media icons. And just to show you what it would look like on mobile screens, we can use the uh, DevTools device toolbar, and you can see the modal still looks good, and everything is just basically stacked and still looks really nice on, on um, small screens. All right, so we are actually going to deploy this. You can see I have it deployed at traversydemo.com and we're gonna be using Hostinger and Hostinger is actually sponsoring this video. So they have all different types of hosting, shared cloud hosting, VPSs. So we're using a shared web hosting account and they have extremely cheap prices for just a ton of features. So if we go ahead and select this package, you can choose to pay monthly or 12 months, 24 months and I actually have a coupon code that you can use. So Traversy Media will give you 10% off. All right, so I'll have that link in the description or you can just type the code in. So that's it, let's go ahead and get started with our project. All right, so I have the Hulu website open here that we can use as kind of a reference. And like I said, it's not gonna be pixel perfect, but we're gonna get it as close as possible um, without actually you know, looking at the, the HTML and CSS for Hulu. Uh, we're not going to be doing this part either just because I think it will take up too much time in the video. All right, so in VS Code, I have a few files and folders. If you're following along, which I would highly recommend that you do, you're going to want to get all of these images. So I'll have a link to the GitHub uh, repository in the description where you can get access to all these images, the header background and all that stuff. And then as far as the other files here, I just have an index.html, which I'm going to open a style CSS, I'm gonna open that as well. We have a main.js file, so that's just gonna be for the this modal that we're gonna do probably last. And then I just have the favicon in the root here as well. All right, so let's get started with the HTML. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a boilerplate with Emmet, so exclamation enter. And let's change the title here to, we'll say stream TV and movies. Let's make that uppercase stream TV and movies live and online and Hulu. OK, and we'll go ahead and close the sidebar up. We don't need that. And then we're going to bring in the CSS file. So we want a link tag in our head and let's bring that in from CSS slash style CSS. And we might as well add our script tag while we're at it. So we're gonna have a source going to our JS folder and then main JS. And for now, I'll just have an H1, and we'll just say hello. So you wanna open this index.html file up in your browser. You can just open it on your file system or if you're using VS Code, I'd recommend using the live server extension. That's what I'll be using. So you can get that installed and then you can just right click and say open with live server. And we should just see hello for now. Okay, so let's continue on here. We're basically just gonna go top to bottom. We're gonna do each section at a time, first being the header, so basically from the top to here. That's including the navigation. If you even wanna call it that, it's really just a button that opens a modal, but uh, if you wanna add more links later on, you can. All right, so let's start on the header. So I'm gonna get rid of this H1. We're gonna use a header tag and I'm gonna give this a class of header as well, and I'll be using Emmet to create my classes. And let's add a nav tag here with a UL and then a list item. And this is actually gonna be a button because it's just gonna open up a modal. It's not an actual link to another page or anything. So I'm gonna give this a class of login BTN, and we'll just say log in. And let's go ahead and look at ours. So it's gonna look, you know, pretty ugly for now, but we'll style the, head, the header once we're done. Uh, but that's it for the nav. Now we want the rest of this stuff right here, which I'm gonna put into a class called header content. So let's go under the nav and say header content. And we're gonna want first an H4 and say try up to one month free. 
and then we're going to have an image. I'm going to give this a class of logo because that's what it is. Let's do image slash logo PNG. Again, you can get the images from the GitHub repo and we'll just say Hulu. And then let's see what we have under that. So we have this text right here. We can just grab it and the Hulu website at the time that you're watching this might be different. Um, if so, I mean, you can just use the, the demo website that I have or you can just copy the text. So uh, actually, we're going to put that in a div with the class of header dash text dash one. So we'll paste that in and then under that div we'll have, let's say header dash text dash two. And that's going to be this text right here, this HBO Max Showtime, etc. And then underneath that we have this button right here. So under that div, let's create a button. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll keep it as a button. We're going to give it a class of BTN, which is going to be kind of a utility class for all buttons on the page. And then we'll add on to that BTN CTA, which is just call to action. And um, let's see what's the saying here. Start your free trial. So we want to put that start your free trial. And then underneath that, we have some really tiny text here. We can call this the legal text. So under the button, let's give a class of legal text and paste that in. So that should be all the content, all the markup that we need. Um, what is that? <laughs> Wait a minute. What is this? Oh, I I put logos here so you can't see it because it's on a white background, but it's actually this. Um, this is called logos. This is just logo. So that should be that should be singular. It's like what the hell's going on? Um, all right. So that's the mock up. Now let's get into the styling. So before we get into the actual header styling, we have some just, you know, base styles for the body and all that. So first thing is the font. And if we look at the Hulu font, uh, let's see, let's just pull this up. So if we look at the body of the Hulu website, you'll see it uses this graphic font and I looked into it. That's a premium font, so we're not going to be using that. But I found something that's pretty similar called Rubik. So if we go to Google fonts, we search for Rubik, R-U-B-I-K, this right here. This is pretty similar, so we're going to just go ahead and use this. So I'm going to select a few styles here. We want light 300. We want regular 400. Um, semi bold 600 and bold 700. And once you do that, you can you could use the link here, but I'm going to grab the import. So everything in between these style tags and then just paste it right in. And then this font family right here, this font family property is going to go in our body. So let's do HTML body and paste that in. And now we should be using the Rubik font. Yep. All right. So we have our font. Now we have some other kind of base classes to do or not, not classes, but base stylings. Um, so I'm going to take the universal selector and asterisk and I'm going to add box sizing border box, which I do in pretty much every layout, just so when we add padding to an element, it doesn't affect the width. Um, we also want to zero out the margin and padding. So we're just going to add a reset here and that will take away any space on any elements. And then wherever we need to add margin and padding, we'll just add it ourselves. OK, and then for the body, let's add a background of black and let's do the text color will be white. I'm going to do a line height of 1.7 and I'm also going to add an overflow X to hidden so that we don't have any scroll bars on the X axis. So horizontally. OK, cool. So let's just make this a little smaller and then we just have some some uh, elements that I want to add some default styles for like links. We'll do white and let's remove the text decoration or I should say remove the underline with text de decoration none. And then on hovered, we'll just make the color, uh, let's say gray. All right. And then for the unordered lists, we want to remove any bullets. Uh, so let's do list style type none. And for images by default, they should take 100% of the container. And as soon as I do that, the logo is going to go 100% across the entire page here. But we're going to add a fixed width to that in a second. So for the header, 
So we have a class of header. I'm going to set a height on this of, let's say, 530 pixels. And then for the background, we have an image that we want to use. So I'm going to set URL and we want to go up one level into IMG. And then there's a header dot JPEG. And I'm going to add some other properties like background repeat. We'll set that to no repeat. The background position will do center center and we want it to cover the area. Okay, so that gives us our background. Um, let's take care of that logo. So header and class of logo. You don't have to prefix logo with header, but I like to just do it just for uh, organization. So let's do a width of, let's say, 270 pixels and then margin on the top and bottom will do 20 pixels. So top and bottom 20 left and right zero. OK, now for let's see, let's do the can. No, we'll do the nav. So right here, remember, this button is inside of a nav. So we'll put that right here. We'll say header nav. And I'm going to display this as a flex box, which is going to make the UL inside of it a flex item. There's only one item inside or one element inside of the nav or one direct element, which is the UL. And I want to align that over here to the right so we can simply add justify content and set that to flex end, which means, you know, to the right. So you can see it's over here now. We do also want to add some padding. I don't want it right up against the edge like that. So let's do padding 20 pixels, 40 pixels. And that will move that down. Um, and then let's see, this is really ugly looking. So let's style the button. So we have our header, nav, and then we have a class of login dash BTN. And I'm going to set the cursor to a pointer. And let's take away the standard button look. So basically the background and the border. So border, none. Okay, and then we'll make the color of the text white. Let's make the font weight bold and let's text transform to uppercase. Wherever we want all uppercase, we don't want to just put that in the HTML because you might want to change it at some point. So it's good to, to use this text transform instead of just, you know, typing in uppercase letters. And let's see what else. Let's make it. Let's make the letter spacing one pixel kind of break it up a little bit. OK, so I think that looks pretty good. So now let's move on to the header content itself. So we'll go right here and say header header dash content. All right. Now for the header content, I'm going to want to um, display as flex so that I can align everything. Now, as soon as I do that, all the flex items inside of header content are going to be put in a row, a horizontal row, which I don't want. I want to change the direction. So flex direction, change it from a row to a column and that'll make it go vertical. And then as far as justify content, so justify content, since it's a column that pertains to aligning it um, vertically. So for that, I'm going to use flex start because I want it to be at the top. Now to align it in the middle horizontal, since we said it's a column, then align items is going to pertain to that and we want that to be center. And then I want to move it down just a little bit. So let's do margin top and we'll do um, 30 pixels. All right. So, yeah, that's it's not like I said, it's not going to be um, pixel perfect, but it's pretty close. So now we have some stuff in here. We want to style this text is all squished together. We also want to style the button. So let's do the text. So we have two. We have header. Um, what is it? Header text one where I'm going to take the font size and bump it up a bit to 22 pixels. And I'm also going to font weight make that bold. OK, so that's this right here. And then this one is header text two. So let's copy that down and let's change this to two font weight is going to be 18. And then we don't want it to be bold, but I do want to add some margin on the top and bottom. So we'll do 20. I think I did 25 pixels top and bottom. So that'll push this text up in the, the button down. All right. So now let's do um, let's do the button. 
Now remember we have a BTN class and we're going to use that in other places as well. So we don't want to prefix it with header. In fact, I'm going to put it up here because what I like to do is like the base styles and then utility classes like button and then and then our more targeted um, styles. So I'll just put a comment there for header. Now BTN will have quite a few styles here. First thing I'm going to do is display it as let's do an inline block because it's inline by default. And then the background, I'm going to set that to white color is going to be dark gray, almost black. And then I'll set a min width of 135. And let's do um, padding. So padding will do 20 pixels, 32 pixels. Okay, so you can see that that's much bigger now. Let's increase the font size a bit to 14 pixels. Uh, I'm sorry, 15, I think. 15 pixels. And then let's make it bold. So font weight. Um, actually, we'll do 600, which is, I think, semi bold. And then let's see, line height. We're going to do 14 pixels. Border, we want, we want no border. Let's say none. And then border radius. I wanted to have a slight slightly rounded edge edges so five pixels and let's see letter spacing we'll do one pixel and let's see what else we need cursor pointer uh, yes cursor pointer and then let's make it uppercase so text transform is going to be uppercase and this is just the btn class so it's going to be for all the buttons around the page. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now when we hover over this, you'll see it go it gets uh, translucent. So what we'll do, I only want that to happen on this button, the CTA. So we'll say btn-cta hover. Then let's make the opacity change it from the default of 1 to 0.8. So now when we hover over it, it's slightly translucent. All right, now this right here, this is the legal text which we're also going to use in other areas. So that's kind of a utility. So let's say legal text. Let's do font size 10 pixels. We'll make that really small. We're going to make it gray. And we're going to add a margin top of 20 pixels. All right. Um, and then the last thing is this right here, this H4. We're going to want to make that green like this. And there's a few H4s. I'm going to make this an H4, this, so these will all have the same styling. So let's put it uh, up here, H4, and let's get the color. And let me just find that color real quick. All right, so it's going to be hexadecimal 00E, D82, and then font size is going to be 14 pixels and text transform is going to be uppercase. Okay. It's a little bigger than I guess we could do 13. And it's a member, it's a different font too. But I think that that's close enough. So, let's see what do we want to do next? Let's uh I want to do the responsiveness for each section kind of as we go instead of, you know, saving it till the very end. So let's do that. I'm going um, I'm going to open up my dev tools and I'm going to click this right here, this device toolbar. And I like to use one that actually has the, the phone Chrome around it. So let's do six, seven, eight. Uh, yeah, we'll just do that, I guess, six, seven, eight. Or I mean, you can keep it on iPhone X. I just like to have the outline of the phone. But yeah, you can do it however you want. And then we can make this a little bigger. Okay. Now there's a couple things we're going to want to do. Um, the logo, I want that to be a little smaller. So let's go down here. This is going to be at the very end. This is going to be our media queries. So let's do media. And I'm going to actually make this a max width of 768. Okay. So anything under that, these styles will. Uh, Oops, I forgot my at. These styles will take effect. 
So the header logo, the width instead of 270, let's do 200. Okay, so we'll make that a little smaller. Um, let's see, let's do, let's make it all centered. So we'll do header, header content text, uh, text align center. And let's do a little bit of padding on the side. So we'll do padding uh, 20 pixels on the sides. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. We could make this text smaller, but I think that that looks all right. So we'll just keep it like that for now. Okay. So I'm going to just go back to the desktop view and then we're going to move on to the next section, which is going to be this subheader. So first we want to do the HTML, of course. Let's go back here and HTML. We do need this to be a little wider. So header ends there. Now each section, I'm going to use a section tag. So let's say section with the class of sub header. And basically what I want to do is use the grid system here, CSS grid. So basically we'll have a grid and we'll have three grid items. The first will be this image. Second will be a div with this stuff in it. Third will be a div with this button and this link in it. So subheader will be the actual grid. Then we'll have the image. This time it's going to be logos. And then underneath that we'll have a div that wraps an H4, which is going to be this right here bundle. So bundle with any Hulu plan and save and then underneath that we'll use an h3 which is going to be this text right here okay and then we have a link with details so let's do a it's not actually going to go anywhere and say details and let's give this a class um, we'll use a class of let's say sub dash link all right so that's the second grid item this div the third is going to be a div with uh, a link formatted as a button. So BTN, we're also going to have a BTN outline class to style this button. <clears throat> and that's going to say get bun, uh, not nundle, but bundle. And then under that, we'll have uh, another link with a sublink class. And that's going to say terms, is it terms apply? And that should do it for the mock-up. So now let's go, let's take a look at it. It's going to look pretty bad. So let's go ahead and um, we'll say subheader. Make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so subheader, we want to display this as, oops, we should probably have the class. So subheader. And we're going to display this as a grid. Now, just doing that isn't going to align it into a row. We have to define our columns. So let's say grid template columns. And basically, we could use percentages here, pixels. I'm going to use fractions. So basically, you know, fractions of the row. Um, and like if we wanted to, to them to be all equal, we could do one fraction for each. So one, 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 but we want the middle one to be wider than the, these other two. So I'm actually going to do two, four, two. So the first and the last will be the same width. And then we want some spacing in between. So let's add a gap of 40 pixels. So now there's some space in between there. Um, we want to align. Sorry about that. We want to align items to the center. That's going to be this way since it's a row. And then let's do some padding on the subheader. So padding 30 pixels top and bottom, 40 pixels left and right, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we have a background gradient that I'm gonna use and I'm just gonna paste that in. I hate typing these out. So we're just setting it to a linear gradient, 318.68 degrees, and then the colors and the percentages that we want that those colors to take up. So I get that nice Hulu gradient branding. So next, um, 
let's see. So let's do the H3. We want that to be bigger. And I'm going to put that up here since it's uh, just, you know, it's not just this H3, it's all of them. So right here we'll do H3 and we're going to set the font size to 26 and I'm going to set the font weight. It's bold by default. I want to set it to 300, which is lighter than normal. And then we also have um, these right here, these links, which have a class of sublink. And I think, I think this is the only place we have sublink. Well, actually, no, we'll, we'll put it up here. So under legal text, we'll say sub link. And I'm going to display as block because you can see right here it's on the same line as the button. So let's display that as block. Uh, so if I save that, that will get pushed down. And then let's also change the color to gray. The font size is going to be 12. Let's do margin top 5. Oops, 5 pixels. And then we're going to put an underline. So let's do text decoration underline. All right, there we go. Now, this button, we're, we're going to want to style that. So remember, it has a class of BTN outline. So we'll go under the rest of the buttons here and do BTN outline. And then I'm going to want to remove the background, change the color. Okay, add a border. Border is going to be two pixels solid. And let's do white. All right, cool. Um, what else do we want to do with this? So the hover effect, I don't want it to, I want it to do this. So basically just change the color of the border. So we'll add down here, let's say BTN outline hover state. We're going to want the color to stay white, but we want the border color to change. So border color will be gray. So now we get that same effect. Now notice the button isn't all the way over. Like if we look at Hulu, the button is all the way over well, as far as it can go. So since we use the grid, we can take that specific grid item, which is a div. Now we don't have a class on it. If we look in the subheader here, uh, we want to grab this div. We could put a class on it, but this is a good opportunity to show you how to use a pseudo selectors. Um, basically, we want to use the last of type because we want the last div in the subheader. So we'll say subheader and let's say uh, we want the immediate div, so or I should say a top level div, and then put a colon and do last of type. And that should pertain to the very last div in subheader. OK, and what I want to do here is justify self because I'm doing just this specific grid item. And I'm going to say justify self to the end. OK, so that'll push it over. We'll also do align items to the end as well, which will align it this way, you know, all the way down. Uh, I'm sorry, align self. OK, and then um, this link, the sublink we want to put in the middle. So what we can do is grab this. So we're targeting the last div, but then we want the sublink within that div and we're going to text align to the center. Awesome. OK, so that looks pretty similar. Now, as far as uh, being responsive, let's open up our dev tools and take, take a look. So it doesn't look very good. And that's because we're still we're still using three columns. So what we'll do is we'll go down to uh, to our media query. Let's make this a little wider. OK, so we'll go down to our media query and we're going to change Let's see what are we going to change here um, the subheader itself so subheader now remember by default we have grid template columns and we did what 2fr 4fr 2fr 
In this case, we just want one column, one stacked column. So we'll say one FR. And as you can see now, they're all on top. Um, another thing, I want this image to be a little smaller. So let's do subheader image and let's do a width of 250. Okay, and we want that centered. Since it's an image, we can do margin auto. Okay, that'll set our, that image. Let's make this a little bigger. All right, and then let's see this right here. That I guess that's well, you know what? We'll text align everything. So in subheader, let's do text align center. And let's also make the gap a little smaller. It's 40 by default. We'll make it 20 on smaller screens. And then this, we don't want this justify self all the way over. So again, we're going to have to target. I'm just going to copy um, this. Yeah, let's copy this right here. And then so we're grabbing the last div and we're going to set justify self instead of uh, end. We want it to be center. Same thing with align self. We'll set that to center. And now if we take a look, everything is nice and stacked. Cool. Actually, I think in the header, if we look at the responsive version of this, this HBO Max thing right here isn't shown. So we, we might want to do that. And we can do that by just simply taking header. And I think that's header text two, and then display none. And then we probably want to add some margin to uh, to header text one to push that down. So header, header text one margin uh, bottom. So margin bottom, we'll say 40 pixels. There we go. Not exact, but I think it looks pretty decent. All right, cool. So that's it for um, the subheader. Now let's move on to let's get rid of this. Let's move on to this area. So we have an H4 here. We have this large text, another subtext, and then we have these, which we're going to use the grid for. Um, now, these are all background images. OK, they're background images with some text overlay. And there's also a shadow. Um, there's also uh, an overlay to make this darker so that the white letters show even on a light background. So we have to deal with that as well. All right. Now we're going to do this part. Well, we're just going to do all the HTML first. So let's go back here and I'm going to call this section categories. So section categories. All right, and then we're going to want. Let's see, so we want the H4 first. That says included in all plans. And then we have um, the large text, which is this all the TV you love. So that's going to go in a div called text dash XL because we're going to have a few of these around the site around the page. And then we have this text here, which I'm going to grab. And we're going to call this subtext. And there'll be other subtext too around the site. So that takes care of the actual text. Okay, it's, ours isn't going to look very good right now. But now we have to do these. I'm calling this this the covers. So still within the sec the category section, let's say covers. So that'll be display grid. And then we'll have cover dash one. And we're going to have that gradient. So I'm going to have a, a, an element here called cover. Let's call it cover grad cover grade. And nothing's going to go in there. We're just using it for styling. It's going to be basically an overlay. And then let's do cover text, which is going to include the sub subtitle, which is a smaller text. So let's do sub dash title. And this is going to say past and current seasons and then underneath that we'll have an h3 and we'll say tv shows 
Okay, so basically it's this these two texts right here. This like the fox and Bob's Burgers. This is in the image, so we don't have to do that. And um, yeah, so that's the first one, cover one. Then what we'll do is grab cover one, copy it down three more times. Okay, and then um, let's change this class. That'll be two. That'll be three. That'll be four. We need those to so we can add the background images. And then the second one is going to be new and classics. And this is going to be, um, whoops, what is this? Movies. Okay, then we have for this one here, this is going to be groundbreaking. And that's going to be Hulu Originals for the H3. Okay, and then this last one here, this one uh, add on. And that's going to say premiums. All right, so let's save that. And if we look, it's not going to look like much. Um, we need to go ahead and start styling. So we'll start with styling the text. So let's see, underneath subheader, let's do categories. All right, so categories, uh, actually, we don't have any styles on categories itself. Let's do, hmm, let's do the text. Let's do the large text. And I don't want to put that down here because we are going to use it in other places as well. So let's go up to the, the where we're doing the utility classes. So we have sublink and we'll do text XL and we'll say font size I'm going to be really big 70 pixels. So right away we should see that really big. Um, and then we're just going to set the font weight to bold. And then underneath that we have this which is the subtext. So let's do subtext. And we want this to have a max width because we don't want it to stretch out all the way. So let's do 850 as a max width, margin bottom 10 pixels, font size 24 pixels. Okay, good. And I think that should do it as far as the utilities. Now let's go back down to where we have categories and we want to do categories and then covers. So categories covers actually we want we want this to be centered. Did I do oh we do have we do have classes. I mean we do have styles for categories itself. So categories we're going to display flex so we can easily align. That's going to put everything in a row. Obviously, we don't want that. So we want to change the direction to a column. And then we're going to set. Let's do align items, not align self, align items to the center. Let's text align to the center. All right, um, we're also going to want to bring this down a lot. So let's add some padding and we'll do 90 pixels on the top and bottom 40 on the left and right. OK, so that pushes that down. Uh, let's also add justify content center as well. And then uh, I think that's it. As far as categories now, this part here we want to look like this. So we're going to use the grid for that. We're going to use some background images. So let's display covers as a grid. All right. And then um, I want to push it down a bit. So actually, let's do our columns first. So grid template columns. And I want these all to be all to be um, equal. So I could do one FR four times or I could just use repeat and say repeat four times one FR, right? So if I save that now, you'll see that the covers are all in, uh, you know, equal column row. I also want to push it down. So let's do margin top and we'll set that 40 pixels. 
and then for actually we want to add some gap as well so let's say gap 20 pixels okay so that looks good now we want to target these divs individually so let's say categories covers and then we want all of the immediate divs or all the top level divs and I'm going to set a height and a width to each one so let's do a height of 500 and let's do a width of 300 and we're going to position this relative because we're going to want the text inside to be positioned absolute oh shoot you know what I forgot something um, for the header notice how here it has that top shadow um, I forgot to do that so you know what, we'll just finish this and then we'll, we'll do that real quick it just reminded me because we're doing it kind of the same way with the overlay uh, but yeah so position relative and then we have the gradient remember we have the cover grad class let's go ahead and do that so let's say categories cover dash grad and uh, for the background it's going to be a linear gradient and I'm going to just paste this in and you can copy it from the repo if you want I hate typing this stuff out but we're using linear gradient using two linear gradients and let's see so if we save that I mean we're not going to see anything yet we should probably do the images which is really simple we just have each one you know cover one we'll have a specific background image so for that let's do background URL and we want to go up into images and we want cover one we want to set no repeat we want to set center center slash cover all right so we take a look there we go let's do the same thing for the other ones we'll just copy that down so we have two make sure you change the image as well so two three three four four all right now we can't see the the this cover gradient overlay yet because what we want to do is position this to be absolute and we basically want it to cover the entire um, the entire div so we can do that by setting the position to top zero left zero so we're saying you know put it in the top left corner and then we want the want it to cover the whole thing so width would be a hundred percent and height would be 100 percent and save that and now you can see that we have that overlay so the text right now is behind it but as soon as we position it it won't be so let's do the text next so we'll do cover um, actually let's prefix it with categories we can do these two just to kind of stay consistent we know that cover one is not going to be used anywhere else so it's fine um, categories and then we want cover dash text so this is going to be position absolute and as soon as I do that it should be on top yep so now you can see the, the words are now readable and as far as positioning let's do top 20 pixels and left 20 pixels and let's align it to the left instead of centered so um, text align will be to the left all right so there we go I think that looks pretty good so like I said I want to add the shadow up here so we're gonna do that by going let's see and we also have to handle the responsiveness of the categories but let's just take care of this shadow first so we want to go up back up to where we have the header and what I'm going to do is use the pseudo selector after so basically before and after we can use is kind of like a ghost element to to um, to style it's not actually an element in the HTML but we're saying you know put one after and then style it and you need to have this content you could put text in here but obviously we don't want to do that but we do need the content and we're going to kind of do what we just did we're going to position what am I doing we're going to position it um, absolute right and then from the top 
0, left 0. We want the width to go 100%. Now the height, the height we don't want to be 100%. We're going to do 180 pixels because we only want it to come down to like, you know, here. We don't want to cover this whole thing. So height 180. Um, let's set a Z index of one. And let's set the background. Now the background is going to be a, a linear gradient. So I'm going to paste that in. And now you can see we have that shadow. Okay. Now the this link right here is behind the overlay and we don't want that. So we put a Z index of one here and the higher the Z index, the closer to you can think of it as like the closer to you that the, the screen it is the, the lower the Z index, the further back it is. So we want a higher index on the nav right here. So we'll change that to two. Now it's still not going to work because it has to in order to use Z index, it has to be positioned. So we're going to position relative and now that's in front of the shadow. OK, so now let's let's look at the responsive version of this. Or I should say the mobile version and let's see. So this I don't like the line height of this. That's the text XL this right here. So let's go down to our media query. And let's put text XL and let's set the line height to I don't know one. That's a little too close. Let's do 1.3. Yeah, that's good. And then let's also make the font size a little smaller instead of 70. We'll do font size 40. And then this right here, this is the subtext. So in the media query, let's do sub text and let's change the font size to let's do. So it's 26 by default. We'll do 20. OK, that looks decent. And then let's see for this right here, we're going to want these to stack. So let's add in our media query, let's do categories and then covers, right? So covers is our grid and let's change the grid template columns to just one FR so that they stack. There we go. Now, if you want, I mean, if I change, if I look at the desktop version, right? And I start to make this smaller. You see, it doesn't change until 768. You might want to change it to a two column grid at a certain point as well. So we could add another media query for that. So we could do media and let's say uh, max width. And we'll set this to 1100 pixels. And then what we'll do is we'll take the categories cover and we'll set it to one FR one FR so it'll have two columns. All right. So if I start to shrink this down now it's in two columns and then when I hit 768 it'll stack. All right. Cool. So that takes care of that. The next part we have is the out. Oh, no, we have the yeah, the live TV section. We have this border. Um, so we're going to add the HTML for that. So let's see, this is going to be a section. So section, I'm going to give it a class of live. And let's do another class of live border for that um, that green border. And let's do an H4, we'll say Hulu plus live TV. And then we're going to have the really large text. So text dash XL. And that's going to say this right here. And then underneath that, we have another subtext section. So we're going to do a class of subtext. So we're reusing these classes in multiple places. This too, this is going to be um, legal text. So 
So legal text, and that, that'll already be styled for us. We don't have to worry about it. Then we have this link right here. I'm not gonna do the little Chevron that thing. You can add that if you want, but I'm not gonna. So this is just gonna be an A tag, and actually I don't want it to be uppercase in the HTML. So I'll say view channels in your area. And that should do it for this section here as far as the markup. So you can see we already have some styling here, but let's go into our CSS and make sure you're not in the media queries. We're gonna go up here, let's say live. And as far as the live itself, we're gonna do a background that is a little lighter than the black. So we'll do hexadecimal 151516. So that should be, yep, so that's a little lighter and uh, padding so padding will do 40 pixels all the way around okay then we need that that green border so remember we have a class of live dash border and we'll set border to four pixels solid and we're going to do as far as the color we're going to do one ce783 is going to be our border Okay, and there we go. So we also want that to be rounded. So let's say border radius 16. I hate how with live server when you're doing the CSS, for some reason it pushes me back up. Um, wish it didn't do that, but it does. And let's see, we're gonna do a padding inside of the border of 100. So give us a bunch of space. I'm just gonna do the, we'll just look at it after. I also want to do display flex so that we can align. So we'll set flex direction is going to be column instead of row. And then we're going to align items, not self. Ah, what did I do? Column and then align items to center. And then let's also do justify content to center because we want it centered both horizontally and vertically. And then we also want the text align to be center. So let's take a look at that. So that looks pretty good. Um, this stuff is already styled. The link here, I want to style that a little bit and move it down. So let's say live and it's the only link there. So we'll just say live a we're going to text transform this to uppercase. We're going to uh, change the font size to 18 pixels move it down so margin top will be 20 pixels text decoration is going to be underline all right so that looks pretty good so next actually let's check it out uh, let's check out the, the mobile version all right so we're going to want to change a couple things up here basically what's making it look so bad is the um, is the amount of padding in the live border. So let's go into our 768 media query and let's say live border. And I think it's 100 by default. I'm gonna change it to 30 on the top and bottom and just 10 on the left and right. So now, yeah, so that looks better. I mean, we could add some spacing, but eh, I think that's fine. So we'll just leave it like that. Now, the next part is going to be this, this live sports. Now, on the Hulu site, you do have this slider. I didn't include that just because I, this video is already going to be really long. You can add this if you want. It's not too hard. You're just going to have a bunch of different sections and have a little JavaScript to load those when you click these. But we're basically just going to have this. And the background is the, the basketball player and the TV. That's all one image. So that's going to be our background. Then we'll have the, the content with the text and then these images. Now, these, these, the logos that you see here are these are in the HTML. These are inline images. But the circle behind it is a background image. OK, and then we just have this legal text here. So let's add the HTML. So uh, right under section live, let's do another section. 
and we'll call this one live sports. Okay, and then we're going to want the live sports content because I'm going to position that absolute within live sports. And then we'll have the large text, so div with text XL, and that's going to say live sports. And then un underneath that, we'll have another subtext, which is going to be this. Okay, so we'll put that in there. And then underneath that, still within live sports content, so you want to stay within that, right under the subtext, we'll have live sports, uh, not spots, sports dash logos. And each one is going to be a div and inside we'll have an image. And this one is going to be image slash live live sports logo one. All right. And then what we'll do is copy this div down. We want four of them and then we'll have two, three, four. And what's weird is Hulu, the the three, which is what NBC. This one is an SVG and not a PNG for some reason. I don't know why, but that one's going to be an SVG. And we have all these. You should have all these in your image folder. So we'll save that. Uh, actually, one more thing is the legal text. So that's actually going to go under this div still within the content. So let's do legal dash text. And in there is going to go this. OK, so if we look at ours, the images are going to be huge, but we're going to fix that. Um, so let's go to our CSS and we're going to want to go above our media queries and let's say live sports. So we're going to want the background image. So let's do live dash sports and that'll have a background of a URL. And that's going to be dot dot slash IMG slash and then let's see, it's this right here, live sports JPEG. No repeat center center cover. OK, and then I'm going to set a height of 800 pixels for this and then position relative because we need to position the content inside absolute. And if we take a look, we should see the background. So let's do the live sports content class. Live sports dash content. And we're going to, like I said, position that absolute. And as far as where we want it, we'll go from the top 160 pixels and the left 100 pixels. And I'm going to set a max width so it doesn't bleed into the uh, the TV part of the background image. So max width is going to be 550 pixels. OK, so if we take a look. You can see this is placed where we want it, but um, obviously the logos don't look right. So let's see, we're going to do we're going to do live sports logos. And we want um, for this, I'm going to set a width of 300 pixels and push it down. So margin top will be 40 pixels. And I'm going to display flex and align items to the center and then justify content. I'm going to take the remaining space and put it in between. So space between. So that's what it looks like so far. Now we want to target the divs that wrap around. So each div that wraps around the image. So to do that, let's say live sports logos and then the immediate divs or the top level divs. We want to add a background because we want to have that white circle, which is a, a separate image. So let's say URL. Uh, it's going to be dot dot slash image slash and it's this network logo BG. And same thing, we want to do no repeat center center cover. And let's make this a height of 60. 
and a width of 60. And we're going to display flex so that we can align everything. So well, I'm sorry, so we can align the image within it to the center both ways. So justify content center and align keeps doing self uh, line items center. OK, so if we take a look at it, we're getting there, but the logos are too big. So we just want to change. Remember, this is 60 pixels. So let's make the logos 40. So we'll do. Um, no, what is it? Just want to do this and then image and set the width to 40 pixels. All right. So now if we take a look, there we go. That looks good. The legal text looks good. So that's it for that. Um, and then the last thing, well, actually, let's take care of the mobile version. Let's see what that looks like. We can make this a little bigger. Um, yeah, so this obviously doesn't look great. We just we want to kind of position it differently. Um, so let's do let's go to our 768 media query and let's do live sports. Now there's actually another image for this because this background image doesn't really make sense. Um, so let's change the background image on smaller screens to I forget what it's called AMG slash and yeah right here live sports small no repeat all right so let's see what that looks like yeah so now we have a different image which looks better now for the content on small screens let's say live sports content we're going to position Actually, it's already positioned absolute, but let's set it from the top instead of 160 or whatever. We'll do 30 and we'll do 30 from the left and let's set a max width. of Oh, no, are we going to change that. What I have it 550. Let's see max with 550. Yes, yeah, so we don't need to add it here. That's going to carry over. All right, so we'll go down and let's take a look. All right, so um, not bad, but we'll probably want to push this down a little bit. So for the content, let's do margin top. Let's see what uh, 60 pixels looks like. I don't have this pre made pre made. Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, so that's live sports. And then the last thing we're not doing this part here. So the last thing is going to be the footer. So we're going to do these unordered lists and also the social media icons. So let's handle that HTML real quick. So we'll jump over here and let's add a footer. So we'll use the HTML5 footer tag. I'm going to give it a class of footer. Um, and then basically we're, we want a footer container so that it doesn't go all the way over to the sides. And then we want a class of footer lists, which is going to be the ULs, because I want that to be a grid. Basically, I want you know this to be a grid, and each one of these ULs to be a, a grid column or a grid item. And then this line here is going to be our divider. So I'll put the lists in in a minute. But underneath that, we want our divider, no content inside, just the div. And then we have our social dash icons. All right, now I'm going to paste the social icon links in. So they're just SVGs in the image folder. And then for the footer list, I'm going to grab those. OK, so I'll paste these in and it's just like I believe five sets of ULs. So we have this and notice if it's a head, the LI has a class of list head. So that's one. Then we have this one, this one, this one and this one. OK, and we'll save that. And that should be it for the, the HTML for the whole thing. And if we take a look, obviously, you know, those icons are huge and we want to change some things up here in terms of the styling. So let's go up top here above our media query and specify this is going to be our um, footer styles. 
Now, let's see, for the footer itself, I don't think we have, well, yeah, we have just the background. So let's do class footer and let's set the background to a color. It's going to be a light color. I'm going to do E, say E, B, E, D, F, two, uh, 2. That's going to be the background and then the color will be dark gray, 333. Three, three. So now we have a light background. Now the, the links are still white, so we want to make sure we add footer A and make those dark. All right, good. And let's see, the footer container. So footer dash container. Uh, basically, just like any other container, we're going to give it a max width, let's say 1100 pixels. We're going to margin auto so that it's in the middle. And we're going to add padding 40 pixels. Okay, so that'll push it over. So now you can see it's pushed over into the container. Now the list, I'm actually going to use flex for this, not grid. I mean, you could use grid if you want, but we're just going to use, uh, let's say, footer dash lists. And we'll say display flex, which will just automatically, you know, put them into a row. Okay, and then the remaining space, see how there's a bunch of space, we want it in between each one. So for that, since it's a row, we use justify content to align it horizontally. And we're going to set that to space between. And now if we take a look now all the space is in between. And then we have that list head class. I want to make these a little bit more uh, prominent. So let's say footer dash lists and then list dash head. So I'm going to text transform and set that to uppercase and then font weight. We'll set that to bold and let's add just a little bit of margin bottom. We'll do five pixels. Okay, so now the list heads. You know, it does this list heads are a little bit more prominent. All right, cool. Um, so for the divider, remember, we have a divider between these. Let's do that next. So divider. And we're going to make this width 100%. The height is going to be three pixels. And then the border top is going to be one pixel color will do CCC and then solid and then let's do margin 30 pixels on the top and bottom. Okay, so now we should have our divider good and then the icon images social icons that's going to be easy. We'll just say social icons image and say with 25 pixels and we're also going to set the height to 25 and we're also going to set the margin dash right to 25. So if we take a look, there we go. Good. And actually, we're probably going to have to do a couple things for the mobile version. Let's see. Yeah. So basically, we can just um, change the direction of the of the flex box. Instead of a row, we can change it to, you know, a column. So down in our 768 media query down at the bottom here, let's say footer lists and we'll change the flex direction to a column. And now there we go. And I'll just keep it like that. It kind of looks like just one big list. So now the last thing we want to do is the uh, the modal. So we're going to need a little bit of JavaScript. But before we do the JavaScript, we're just going to create the modal. So we want kind of like an overlay around everything, right? And then we want the white box with the form. So let's go to our HTML and um, let's go. Well, we could put this anywhere really because it's going to be just absolute and it's only going to show when we click the login. But I like to put the modal at the bottom. So go down here and let's do a class of modal. And then inside that so modal will be That'll take care of like the overlay, the dark background. Then we want the modal box itself. 
So modal box, and then we'll have the modal body. And that's where the form's going to go. I'll put that in a second. Underneath the body, we're going to have the footer. So modal dash footer. And just to show you on the Hulu website, what I'm talking about is, so this will be the body and then this right here will be the footer. All right, so we have modal footer and we also want the close button. So under the footer, let's do image and um, we're actually going to give this a class of close. So class close and image is going to be IMG slash close SVG and for the alt close. All right, now inside the footer, that's going to be pretty easy. Just a paragraph we will say don't. Uh, yeah, don't have an account and then we'll have a link and we'll say start your free trial. OK, now the body, we're going to have the form. So let's do an H3 first and we'll say login. And then we're going to have a form and this isn't actually going to do anything, obviously, but so we don't need an action. And then we'll do a class of form control. And let's do a label. We'll say label for email and email. Right. And then for the input, we're going to do input with the type of email. We don't need a name. Oops, we don't need a name. And then ID will be email. And then we're going to do the same thing for password. So we'll just grab this form control, copy that down change these to password. Okay. And let's see. We're going to have the forgot your password. If we look at this right here, we're just going to have this forgot your password. We're not going to do the captcha. But this is going to go under the Let's see. Yeah, we want to still still be within the form, but under the form control and we'll have a paragraph with an A tag. And inside here, we'll say forgot your email or password. And then underneath that paragraph, we'll have a button. Let's give it a class of BTN and BTN dash doc. And that will say login. All right. So if I save that, that's going to be down at the very bottom giant close button. But um, you can see it's it's showing now we want to start to style this. So let's go in our style sheet. We want to go above the at the end, but above the media queries. And let's say this is styling the modal. All right. Now, first thing is going to be the modal class itself, which is like I said, like the overlay. So let's do modal and ultimately it's going to display none because we don't want it to show by default, but I'm going to comment that out for now. So the position is going to be fixed and we want to place this at the top left. OK, so top left um, Z index, I'm going to do one and we want it to be 100 percent a height. All right, because we want it to cover the entire page, so 100 percent height and width. And then for the overlay, we're going to do a background of RGBA, so red, green, blue, alpha, 0, 0, 0, which is black. And then for the alpha value or the transparency, we'll do 0 0.5. So if I save that now, you can see there's a, a dark overlay over the entire page. All right, now let's do the the um, box, make this smaller. So modal and then we'll go into that. We'll do modal dash box. OK, so for this, I want it to be in the middle. I'm going to do 10 percent margin on the top and bottom and auto on the left and right. So it's in the middle and then a width. If you want to mess around with this, you can. I'm going to do 400 pixels. All right. So now you can see that we're in the middle. 400 pixels. We want a white background. So let's say background white. OK, we want the text to be dark. We want the position to be relative because the close button will be positioned absolute. 
All right, and then we have some stuff in the body. So let's first do modal dash body and let's do padding. So modal body padding will do 50 pixels. Okay, kind of push everything in. And let's um actually Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's all we need for the body itself, but we have some other stuff inside of the modal body, like the H3, for instance, which is the login. Um, I'm going to set the font weight to bold. And that's actually all we need to do there. Let's see what else. The uh, Should we do the form? Yeah, let's do the... We'll do the form last. Let's do the button. So it has the BTN class, which is a white button, but we want this to be dark. Um, so let's see, button dark, I'm actually gonna put as a utility class though. So we'll go up top where we have the rest of our buttons. And let's say button dark. So background, let's do zero 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 and let's do color white all right and then let's go back down and there's a couple things I want to do with that button that's in the, the modal body so let's say modal body BTN I want it to be all the way across so width is going to be a hundred percent and then let's also push it down so we'll do margin top 30 pixels. Okay, now uh, let's do the the close button. So the close button is going to be positioned absolute. So let's say modal close. And uh, first of all, we'll do a cursor pointer. And then let's position. Well, let's let's change the size first. So we'll do a height of 23 pixels and a width 23 and then let's position actually we'll save that okay and then the position uh, position is going to be absolute within the modal and the location is going to be top 20 pixels from the top and then let's do from the right also 20 pixels so that'll put it up in the corner good and then before we get to the form, let's do the footer, which is this part right here. So we'll say modal, modal dash footer. So background, background for the footer is going to be a gray. So it's going to be F7, F7, F9. Okay, that's our footer. And um, the color, 333, and the padding. Do 20 pixels top and bottom. Um, we're also going to do a slight border top. So border top will do triple E one pixel solid. And let's text align to the center. Okay, and then the link. Obviously, we can't see the link because it's white. So let's just take this and say for the link inside we'll do color and I'm just going to do steel blue. All right, cool. So that's our footer. Now for the form, the form I'm not going to prefix with modal because uh, if you want to use the form control class in other places, if you were to continue on this, I want you to be able to do that. So let's say form. So form control uh, I just want to have margin 20 on the top and bottom. Oops, just to kind of separate them out a little bit. And then the label, so form control label, let's display block. So that will put it on its own line. I also want to text transform to uppercase. Okay, and then finally we have the input. All right, so the input, let's do a width of 100% to stretch it all the way across. Let's do the border at two pixels and let's do CCC. So we're going to lighten that border up. 
All right, we'll do a slight border radius. Um, so border radius, let's do five pixels. And then let's do a height of 50 pixels. And we'll add a bit of padding of five pixels. All right. So not exact in terms of, you know, spacing, but I think that looks pretty good. Uh, let's take a look at it on mobile screens. So, it, I mean, it's good, except I think it could be a little, uh, a little more narrow. So what we'll do is just take, let's go into our 768 media query and let's do modal. We want the box, so modal dash box. And let's just say with, I think it's 400, let's change it to 300. Or maybe 350. Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, so we have the, <coughs> excuse me, we have the modal created. Now I'm gonna go back up to the modal class and where I have the display none commented out, I'm gonna uncomment that and that's going to just go away. It's not going to show. So this is where the JavaScript comes in, right? Uh, let me just get rid of this. All right, so we want to be able to click on that and open it up. So now let's go into our JavaScript file. So we should have JS main JS and it should be already, you know, you should have your script tag in your HTML. And the first thing I want to do is bring in what I need. So let's say const modal, and I'm going to use document dot query selector, and I'm going to select it by the class of modal. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in two other things here. I want to bring the login button, so login dash btn class, login btn, and then let's see, we also want the close button. And that has a class of close. Okay, so we're bringing that stuff in. Now we need to create some event listeners. So when the login button is clicked, so we'll do add event listener. And we'll say when there's a click, then let's run a function. Actually, we're going to call this, we're going to name this function open modal. Okay, so that'll run that. And we might as well just create the rest of this too. So we'll have close button. So when close button is clicked, it's going to call close modal. And then also we want to make it so when we click outside of the modal, it also closes. So to do that, we're going to say window. So on the window object, we're going to add an event listener for a click. And then we're going to do outside click. So we have three functions that we're going to create. So first is going to be function open modal. And all we need to do is take our modal, which I brought in up at the top, and then add a style. Oops. So modal.style. So we can directly uh, manipulate CSS here. Remember, it's displayed hidden, right? Or I'm sorry, display none. I'm going to set it to display block so that it shows. So let's save that and let's go over here and click. And now you can see it's goes from display none to display block. Now I don't have a way to close it at the moment unless I reload the page. So let's create our function close modal. Um, and then for that, we're simply going to take do the same thing here, except we're going to set it back to none, right? So if I click open, click the close, that's it. Now, like I said, I want to make it so when I click outside, it also closes. So that's easy to do. We have our function uh, outside click, and that's going to take it. We can pass in an event parameter here because this function is being fired off. Uh, when an event fires off, when a click fires off. Now we want to just check the target. So E dot target and say if that is equal to modal, then we want to just run close modal. 
All right, so now if I click, opens up, I click outside. If I click inside, it doesn't, obviously it doesn't close, but if I click either the close button or I click outside, that's gonna close. Now, if you wanna do, make it a little smoother, like when it opens, see how it just kind of flicks in, and that's, that's what Hulu does. They did put it on the side for smaller screens, but I don't see a need to do that. But if we wanted to have kind of a, 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 a delay, we could add in our CSS, we could do a little animation here. So let's go to, let's see, we want the modal box. And I'm gonna add, let's say animation, and we'll have a keyframe an animation called modal open. And let's make the direction, direction, duration one second. Mm -hmm. And then right underneath here, we'll say at keyframes, modal open, you could call it whatever you'd like. And let's put our from. So from, we're gonna start with the opacity at zero. And then two, we wanna end up with the opacity at one, which is just, you know, no, no transparency. So now if I click, you can see that it kind of fades in. It takes a second. If you want it to be shorter, you could do like 0.5 or, I mean, if we, we could say like four seconds and it's gonna take four seconds to actually get to opacity one. But I think one second's good. All right, so now what I wanna do is actually take this project and deploy it to Hostinger. So we're gonna do that next. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and deploy this Hulu website, and we're gonna be using Hostinger. They are the sponsor of this video, and we're using a shared hosting account. So if we go to hosting, shared web hosting, and there's a bunch of ways that we can deploy. We can use SSH, we can use FTP. Um, there's a lot of different ways. I like to use Git, so that way we can just push to a GitHub repository and uh, we can set up auto deployment. So that's the first thing we need to do is create a new repository. So I'm gonna go to GitHub, new repository, and we'll call this Hulu web page clone and this will be the exact repository that I have in the description and we'll just say Hulu web page clone and I'm gonna make this public let's create our repository and I'm just gonna grab this right here so I'm gonna copy this this is to add our remote repository let's go back to um, you can either just open a terminal or you can use the VS Code terminal, which is what I'll be doing. So I'm gonna open that up and we'll make this bigger. Just make sure you're in the, the file directory. And let's initialize a Git repository, so git init. Uh, okay, and then let's go ahead and I'm just gonna clear this up. So we initialize the repository, now let's git add all. So we're gonna add everything to the staging area. Then we wanna make a commit to our local repository. So git commit dash M and we can put a comment. We'll just say initial commit, okay? Now I'm gonna clear that up and I'm gonna paste in that git remote command, which is gonna add our um, uh, remote repository. And then if we look back here, we just wanna create a main branch. So we can paste that in and then we're gonna go ahead and grab this and we're gonna to push to our main branch. All right, and then once that's done, you should be able to come back to your repo, reload, and you should see your files. Okay, now we can take, let's see, let's go to code and we wanna grab our SSH, so click on SSH, and we're gonna just copy this to our clipboard. All right, and then we're gonna go to hosting iron. I'm gonna log in. Okay, once I'm logged in, I'm gonna go down to my hosting account that I wanna use, which is this traversydemo.com. So I'm gonna click manage. And then I'm gonna go down to, I think it's advanced, and then get. Okay, now we do need to generate an SSH key. Um, the repository, I'm gonna paste in, that's what I just copied from GitHub, but I do wanna generate an SSH key, and then what we wanna do is take this, we can just click copy, and go to GitHub, and go to settings. 
So I want to go over here and go to settings and we just want to add this SSH key. So right here, SSH and GPG keys. We're going to click new. Uh, whoops, I don't want GB, GPG, new SSH key. And I'll call this Hostinger. And then we just paste that in and add our key. Okay, so now that's added as a key. All right, now, so this is the repository that we want to use. The branch name is main, and then directory, it's just the root directory. So let's click create. And we should see a message. Yep, git, repo git repository stored successfully. And if we scroll down, you'll see manage repositories, and we should see our Hulu web page. And it's as easy as that. If I go to traversedemo.com, there we go. We're all deployed. And just check our modal. That works good. So if you're interested in hosting or have a 10% off coupon in the description and hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it helped you sharpen up some of your CSS skills and you get a cool little project. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.